Hi, my name is Chris Dodder. I'm a DARE Extension Master Gardener. Thank you for joining us uh, for this library garden series. Today we're going to talk about a subject that have a lot of people up in arms. An arm full of shovels, hoes, and herbicides. This is an overview of what we're going to talk about. What is a weed? Are there good weeds and bad weeds? You should get to know and identify your weeds. Then we'll talk about some of the common weeds found on the Outer Banks and how to control them. So what is a weed? <laughs> a weed is a plant out of place. They grow where they're not wanted. They compete with other desirable plants for water, nutrients, and sunlight. They can displace our native plants in natural areas. They reduce crop yields and affect the beauty of a landscape. Sometimes they can attract or harbor insects and other pathogens. Are there good weeds and bad weeds? <laughs> weeds are found throughout the world. Only about 40% of the weeds found in the United States are native, such as ragweed, poison ivy, and wild onion. Of course, we have all of those. The other 60% are considered exotic or imported. A lot of our uh, most common weeds were accidentally brought in by our ancestors with crop plants from other countries. Others were intentionally brought in as forage crops or ornamentals or for uh, dune stabilization, such as kudzu, and only later were they designated as weeds. So again, are there good weeds and bad weeds? What is one man's weed is another man's wildflower or food. There are some weeds that are edible and others, of course, that are poisonous. Dandelions, goldenrod, and wild violets are attractive wildflowers that provide food for humans as well as pollinators. Some edible weeds are powerhouses, such as dandelion leaves, roots, and flowers. We all consider poison ivy and its family a harmful, dangerous weed, but that's only to humans. In the fall, it supplies food for our native wildlife, and there, of course, there are many other. Now, correct identification of weeds is necessary when using herbicides because no herbicide kills all plants. Even the non-selective herbicides that contain glyphosate, such as Roundup, Rodeo, Pronto, and there's a lot of them out there, all have varying effectiveness on weeds. If using other methods of control, such as mechanical or hand weeding, it's still useful to identify them because some are actually spread by cultivation rather than discouraged by it. Of course, you have your grasses and sedges. They're usually easily easy to identify. They have long, narrow blades, such as our grasses, garlic, onions, and even lilies. These are all considered monocots. Broadleaf weeds, dicot weeds, are very diverse, so an accurate identification is necessary for control methods. There are many books and online websites which are very useful in weed identification. It would take us three, probably, presentations to even talk about all of them. Now, these books and websites offer pictures of plants and seedlings as mature plants and in flower. Recommended websites and books are included in the resource screen at the end of this presentation. Now, proper identification of weeds targeted for control is necessary in order to select the effective control measures, whether cultural or chemical. A weed's life cycle has impact on the selection and success of a given control procedure. 
So it is important to learn the life cycle characteristics of a weed when you first learn its identity. Each weed has a weak point in their life cycle that can be exploited when developing a control program. Winter annual weeds germinate in the fall or early spring. They survive as a rosette, flower, or fruit and die in the spring or summer. The blue arrow on this graph shows the weak point in the life cycle when a pre-emergent herbicide should be used. This is usually in late fall for the winter annuals. A pre-emergent herbicide prevents the germination of seeds by inhibiting a key enzyme. Pre-emergent herbicides that contain dinitroaniline, such as Balin, Surflan, and Barricade, and again, there are others, are available for the homeowner. Be sure to read the labels and make sure they will work on the weeds you are trying to control. Looking at the screen, you can see the effect a pre-emergent -er herbicide has on the seeds. You also want to be sure to be safe when you use it in the uh, landscape around the other landscape plants, because if they've dropped seeds, those will also be affected. Your summer annual weeds germinate in the spring or early summer. They flower and set seed or fruit and then die in the fall usually after a killing frost, and we don't get too many of those here on the Outer Banks. Spring and summer annuals weak point in their life cycle is before the seedlings appear, again indicated by the blue arrow, which is usually in early spring. This is when you would treat with a pre-emergent herbicide at the correct time. Now perennial weeds for, persist for more than two growing seasons. They are typically the most difficult to control in landscapes. They are categorized by how they reproduce. Many reproduce in more than one way. Simple perennials, such as dandelions, reproduce by seed and often have tap roots or fibrous roots, uh, which help them persist through the winter. Creeping perennials spread rhizomes, stolons, or creeping fleshy nodes that produce new shoots. Examples of this would be the dollar weed and Bermuda grass. They may also produce seeds. Tuberous perennials produce tubers. An example would be your yellow nutsedge and Florida betony. Bulbous perennials produce bulbs which are modified leaves with a very compressed stem at the base. Wild garlic and wild onion are the most common uh, examples of this. We talked about a weak point in each of the different weed life cycles. If you're hand pulling or using other mechanical methods of removing weeds, they should be removed before they flower and set seed. If the weeds have ever grown and hand pulling is out of the question, a chemical method can be used. For the summer and winter annual weeds, the weak point which I showed you is when they are still seeds before they begin to germinate by using a pre-emergent herbicide. For perennials, it's a different approach depending on the way the weeds propagate. But most of the time, this occurs in the fall. The plant begins to move food into their root systems for storage. By applying systemic herbicides, this will ensure that it moves into the storage system of the plant. Using the right herbicide at the right time is very important. Of course, <laughs> patience is needed because this may need to be done for a few years. First, what you wanna do is with some general tactics. You want to monitor your, your landscape frequently. Sometimes pulling the weeds keeps you in control. Provide a favorable soil environment by having your soil tested and follow the recommendations for improvement. Now North Carolina is one of the few states that provides free 
soil sample kits during the months of April through November. You still have to pay for the uh, shipping. Now these kits are available at the DARE Mantio Extension Office. Now December through March there is a five dollar fee for this service. Mulch, as you see in this picture, will help control some weeds when layered three inches thick. It prevents sunlight and air from getting to the seed and causing germination. Be sure not to mound the mulch around the trunks of trees and shrubs. A good layer of mulch can help with weed management. Another important general tactic is sanitation. Avoid bringing seeds into uninfected areas by using weed-free planting seed and uncontaminated plant stock. Clean your work clothes and mach machinery, such as your lawn mower, to remove any seeds that might be present. But as you can see from this picture, sometimes mulches are not enough. Physical removal of weed species in small gardens is manageable. Observing your garden or landscape routinely will help you maintain control. Hand remove, removal of weeds is labor and time intensive and may not be practical for weed infested areas. If it is a small area, make sure you remove the entire weed. It is easier to dig after a good rain or soaking. A well-watered, healthy lawn can naturally outcompete weeds. If the weed has been correctly identified and still a problem after you have tried other strategies, chemical controls may have to be used. It is very important to read and select chemicals that will control the identified weed and is safe for the lawn, your turf grass, and surrounding plants. As we've said before, there is no one herbicide that will kill all weeds. All users are legally required to follow the instructions on the herbicide package, including the amount and timing of application, as well as protective gear. Post-emergent herbicides. They work best on your seedlings during their active growing period. On large mature weeds, they are less effective and may need to be applied several times. Broad spectrum pesticides are very potent and effective against the weeds that they are used to control. They last longer in the soil and can be harmful to other plants and beneficial insects, as well as humans. Selective herbicides control one type of weed. For example, 2,4-D is a chemical used in many herbicides and generally only kills the broadleaf plants without harming other plants or turf grass. There are many other formulations that offer control, but be sure you have identified the weed and use the appropriate herbicide. All right, let's talk a little bit about weeds we encounter here on the Outer Banks. There are a lot of them. They love our weather here. Of course, there's not enough time in this presentation to talk about all of them, so we've chosen a few that our Ask a Master Gardener line gets frequent questions about. Carolina geranium. It's a cute little plant. It's a native herb found in eastern North America and all areas of North Carolina. It is a multi-branched and sprawling, hairy, sometimes called pubescent, annual or biannual, usually growing no taller than about a foot. It prefers dry, gravelly, sandy to clay sites in partial sun to full sun. This plant is still sold commercially for home use because it can make a great ground cover, but it does become weedy. Hand pulling before flowering or setting seed works well. The only thing that you have to worry about is that it is a very beneficial flower to our pollinators, especially 
in the early spring. Common chickweed, I think you all have seen this in lawns. It's a cool season annual plant that is considered a weed. The plant grows easily in moist soil and full sun or part sun and is often seen in lawns. It can be confused with other plants that look similar, but it is distinguished by having hairs only on one side of its stem. This plant prefers areas with a history of disturbance. Of course, remove the plants by hand before they go to seed. It can be well managed with pre-emergent herbicides, but again, be sure to check the label for correct use. Handbit, another one. This is all in my backyard. Kind of looks pretty. It's a cool season annual weed in the mint family introduced from Europe. The common name handbit comes from the observation that chickens like it. Unlike many of the relatives in the mint family, handbit does not have a strong or distinctive mint scent. It can be easily confused with purple dead nettle, which is another weed. Handbit leaves are typically smaller than those of purple dead nettle. A dense, vigorous turf is the best way to reduce the encroachment of handbit in your landscape beds and in your turf grass. It can be hand pulled or hand dug out and suppressed with the use of mulch. If handbit is a problem in uh, your ornamental beds, glyphosate based herbicides can be used for spot treatments around ornamental plants. Do not allow the spray mist to contact ornamental foliage or stems because it can uh, cause severe injury. A cardboard uh, shield may be used to prevent uh, the spray from drifting onto other ornamental plants. Horseweed. It's a winter annual in the um, aster family. The peak germination is in the late autumn and early spring, but sporadic germination may occur anytime. It forms a rosette of hairy leaves. In spring, Plants bolt upright and they really move fast, three to six feet tall. They have a tap root with some fibrous roots making them difficult to remove. Do not let the plants go to seed. Control horse weed around the property to prevent spread. When hand weeding, completely remove them as the plants can re-sprout from broken stems. You can control horseweed by pre-emergent broadleaf herbicides. All right, now we're going to talk about at least four of the summer annual weeds. Oh, one of our favorites, crabgrass. It's a weedy summer annual grass that can spread quickly and form colonies. It develops several branching stems at the base with the lower branches uh, tending to sprawl across the ground. It prefers full sun to part sun in moist to dry soils, but is very adaptable to our poor soil. It has spread to nearly every state in the country. Use a pre-emergent herbicide in late winter or early spring to prevent germination of seed. These uh, products often need rainfall or irrigation to activate them. So time your application wisely. Remove any plants that do germinate early in the season as it becomes more difficult as the roots take hold of the soil. It is usually killed by frost. Well, our warm winter sometimes doesn't kill them all. In lawn situations, Keep your turf grass as healthy as possible so that it has a dense canopy that will outcompete crabgrass. Spotted spurge, it grows close to the ground, often forming a dense mat. Frequently, a red spot will mark the leaf halfway through the center vein. Flowers, 
fruit stems and leaves are hairy. Spotted spurge produces tiny pinkish flowers. The plant's central taproot is capable of, of extending more than 24 inches through the soil. All spurges reproduce by seed. And creeping spurge also can produce roots along the stem, creating new plants. The primary method of managing spurge, of course, is prevention. Since controlling this weed is very difficult once it becomes established. Hand weeding is the most practical solution for established plants and thanks to their deep but easily pulled up taproot, it's easy to accomplish. Mulching in early spring excludes light and sometimes helps prevent germination. There's a wide variety of pre-emergent herbicides that will control um, spurge, but they must be applied before seeds germinate in mid-spring, and that's when the soil begins to warm up. Post-emergent herbicides that contain the glyphosate will also kill it, but applications should be made early in the season when plants are small and before seeds form. Another one we love, sand spur. Southern sand spur, sand burr, uh, is a summer annual that germinates in the spring, grows during the summer and early fall, and dies with the first heavy frost. The name sand spur describes the sandpapery feel of uh, the leaves and the spurs or burrs that stick in your feet. They are produced from July until the first frost. They reproduce by seeds. Sand spur tends to be more of a problem in sandy soils, of course, which we have plenty of, from the coastal plain westward to the sand hills. Hand pulling with gloved hands is a simple, practical approach to control sand spur in small areas. Improve the health of your lawn and the density and health of your lawn by fertilizing at the right time and with the correct amount, maintaining an appropriate soil pH, mowing at the recommended height, and watering properly. In your ornamental beds, uh, a two to three inch layer of mulch may help reduce germination. Now, this annual weed can be controlled with a pre-emergent herbicide applied in early spring. You may need to repeat this in 60 days. Make sure you select an herbicide that is safe for your turf grass. Pigweeds, a multi-stem summer annual in the amaranth family. And there are so many types out there. It's considered a weed. It can be found growing in wastelands, fallow fields, farm lots, uh, gravelly areas. Its invasiveness causes yield loss in many vegetable row crops. It flowers from July through September. The seeds ripen in August through October. It is typically pollinated by the wind. Mowing can suppress pigweed growth and seed production, <laughs> but the plant will bounce back and complete its life cycle if mowing is not maintained. One can remove small numbers of plants with a spade or by hand pulling, but after removing uh, the weeds by hand, it is recommended bagging and removing them to ensure seeds are not left behind. Okay, we're gonna move on to some of the more difficult plants to control. And these are perennials. Simple perennials spread by seed and also have a taproot or hardy fibrous root system that helps them survive over the winter. Dog fennel. It's an herbaceous perennial weed in the daisy family with finely dissected leaves that are very aromatic when crushed, an aroma that some find very unpleasant. The plant spreads in the landscape by wind blown seeds and spreading rootstocks, sometimes to the point of becoming very invasive. 
So it is important to prevent plants from flowering. Seedlings emerge from spring through early autumn. Dog fennel grows rapidly in moist but well-drained soils in full sun to part shade. It tolerates soil types of all kinds, especially dry, sandy soils. It also has great drought tolerance. Plants are difficult to remove, and if not removed completely with hand weeding, plants will re-sprout from broken stems. Dog fennel is managed from seed by many broad spectrum pre-emergent herbicides. However, there is limited research on all the effectiveness of all of them. Plantain, a perennial herb native to Eurasia and introduced to North America by early settlers. Plantain is wind blown and wind pollinated and each plant can produce 20,000 small oval shaped orange to black blue bitter tasting seeds. This is a common lawn weed that is able to resist mowing because of its low basal leaves. Seeds can also attach to passing people and animals and hitchhike to other locations. Hand pulling or using an appropriate weeding tool are the primary means of mechanical weed control in lawns. This is a viable option at the beginning of an infestation and on young weeds. Hand pulling, especially when the soil is most, makes the task easier. If you choose to use an herbicide, spot treat weeds with liquid, selective, post-emergent, broadleaf weed killers applied when weeds are actively growing. Look for products with one or more of the following ingredients, which are 2,4-D, Dicamba, or triclopyr. Now, as we go along, each perennial gets more difficult to control. Your creeping perennials, they can reproduce in a number of ways by underground stems called rhizomes, above ground stems called stolen, and of course, fleshy roots that produce new shoots. They can also reproduce by seed. Bermuda grass, a lot of you know it as wire grass. It is a warm season perennial grass that is used quite frequently in lawns, especially here on the Outer Banks. It grows to about two feet tall and goes dormant in the winter, turning brown. It spreads aggressively by strong, wiry stolon. Maintaining a healthy, dense turf can help prevent the spread of Bermuda grass in your lawns. Mowing your lawn too short kind of favors the growth of Bermuda grass. In ornamental beds, small infestations can be dug up or hand pulled. Be sure to remove all parts of the root. Do not rototill the plants because Bermuda grass can re-sprout from the smallest piece. Hand pulling when the soil is moist makes the task a little easier. Now perennial grasses are extremely difficult to control selectively in our lawn turf grasses. There is a liquid selective post-emergent herbicide with the inactive ingredient phenoxaprop can be used to suppress Bermuda grass in lawns. Or you can use a glyphosate-based herbicide uh, to spot treat or remove the entire lawn. Weeds must be actively growing uh, in August when glyphosate-based herbicide is applied. To improve control, water well and allow foliage to grow a week or two before treating. Apply the herbicide at the rate recommended by uh, the label and do not disturb uh, the foliage or roots for a week after application. You want to water to encourage regrowth and then you can retreat that new growth. But beware, chances are 
that the Bermuda grass will re-sprout and come back in the future. Red sorrel, also called sheep sorrel, a perennial weed that is easily identified by its red flowers and spade-shaped leaves. It is a member of the buckwheat family and native to Europe. The plant produces large quantities of pollen that can contribute to hay fever. It is fond of low nutrient soils and can be found along roadways and disturbed lands. It is quite aggressive and considered difficult to control and manage because of its creeping rhizomes. Pulling up red sorrel doesn't work for long because of the regeneration of their rhizomes. Improving the soil with compost or manure will help, help over time and red sorrel will fade because it only grows in poor soils. Using spot applications of the glyphosate-based herbicide will also work, but you need to make sure you protect the surrounding plants. Dollarweed, also known as pennywort. It's a warm season perennial weed. It gets the common name dollarweed from its silver dollar shaped leaves. It is a low growing plant that spreads by seeds, rhizomes, and tubers. Dollarweed thrives in weak, thin turf with excessive moisture. Now the first defense against dollarweed is to reduce the moisture levels and um, modify any cultural methods, such as make sure you have the proper mowing height and irrigation. A chemical control may still be necessary to further reduce the dollarweed population. Herbicides should be chosen according to the turf species uh, and applied in late spring, after the full green up of the lawn, when weeds are small. Once dollar weed has made its way into the landscape bed, an herbicide may be necessary if hand pulling is not practical. The glyphosate based herbicide and imazoquin are both more effective when weeds are actively growing and should not be applied under drought conditions. Tuberous perennials. These are difficult to control and can spread by cultivation. Tubers can persist in the soil for years from the smallest segment. Some examples are purple and yellow nutsedge and Florida betony. Nutsedges, very aggressive and persistent weeds that commonly infest lawns, vegetable and flower gardens. They can be very difficult to eradicate and their control is likely to be a long process. Successful control involves both cultural and chemical management. And there are several ways the species can be distinguished from each other, which is important because they differ in herbicide susceptibility. Purple nutsedge produces tubers in chains connected by rhizomes, whereas yellow nutsedge produces tubers at the tip of their rhizomes. Purple nutsedge tends to have a darker green leaf and produces a characteristic reddish purple seed head. The leaf tips of purple nutsedge tend to be uh, blunter than those of yellow. This species is much more difficult to control than yellow nutsedge, so proper identification is important. Most of the herbicides that can control yellow and purple nutsedge are very toxic to surrounding plants, so be sure you have those plants identified correctly. Bulb weeds, each one gets more difficult here. Wild garlic and wild onion are winter perennials, with wild garlic being predominant in the Carolinas. They emerge in late fall from underground bulbs and grow through the winter and spring. The plant dies back in early summer. These underground bulbs can persist in the soil for years. While both of them have thin green waxy leaves, 
Those of wild garlic are round and hollow, while those of wild onion are flat and solid. With a small number of weeds, pulling, though difficult, is an option. Uh, it is easier to pull up uh, large groups of bulbs when the soil is moist. However, it is still likely that you leave a bulb or a little bulblet in the ground and new leaves will again reemerge. For best results though, digging them out with a shovel or a trowel would help get more of those bulbs. Mowing will not kill garlic or wild uh, onion. However, regular mowing can weaken the plants and prevent them from setting seed. Persistence is the key here. If using a herbicide, plants will need to be sprayed more than once and for more than one season. Mowing wild garlic or wild onion immediately before applying an herbicide may improve the uptake. After the application, don't mow for at least another week. Treat wild garlic and wild onion in November and again in late winter or early spring before these plants can start producing the next generation of bulbs. Amazoquin, the active ingredient in some nut sedge killers and or a three-way broadleaf herbicide will provide control for wild garlic and wild onion with repeat applications. Make sure it is safe though for the turf grass you're, uh, that it is in. This is one of the most difficult group of plants, woody weeds. They are difficult to control because they're all over the place. If you live on the Outer Banks, I think you have met with all of these weeds. Patience and persistence are necessary when dealing with them. First thing, sanitation. It is the most important. It is easy to spread a piece of these plants to other places. Cleaning your tools and being sure you do not introduce it from your shoes or other devices is very necessary. Frequent cutting back of the plants by clippers or mowing will kind of weaken the plants over time. But if there is too much, an herbicide may be your best option. When using an herbicide, be sure to treat at the best time of year when they are most vulnerable to the effects. Direct your application or spray by protecting the surrounding plants with cardboard or other barriers. Be sure it is not a windy day. Wipers of some sort, such as sponges, paintbrushes, can be dipped in the herbicide and applied to the weed. Dipping your clippers in the herbicide when cutting back the weed will keep the other plants safe, but be sure to clean those clippers uh, after this process. Deciduous weeds. These difficult to kill woody weeds, again, will need frequent applications. For the deciduous weeds, such as greenbrier or smilax, be sure to cut the stem and then apply the herbicide. It will be drawn into the root system. When using triclopyr, use it cautiously. This is a brush killer and may harm other ornamentals. Be sure to read all the instructions on the herbicide. Use protective gear as recommended. Now, if using the uh, glyphosate-based herbicides, uh, this is an example of the optimum time to treat and the, 1 and the percent solution to use. Remember, follow all the safety precautions and read the labels. I know I keep repeating myself, but that is very important. Patience, of course, is necessary. One application will not remove the plant. It may take repeated applications as well as a few years to gain some kind of control. Now, here are a few of the plant identification websites and apps that may help you in identifying weeds in your landscape. Some of these apps um, are free, others do charge. But my favorite part is the line at the bottom. 
Weeds really are job security for the gardener. Now, if you would like a copy of this, uh, I'll tell you where to get it in a minute. Uh, this is just a uh, list of all the resources and picture credits that were used for this presentation. If you have any questions or would like a copy of the resources and the apps, please call our Ask a Master Gardener line at 252-473-4290 or email us at greenlineobx at gmail.com. I thank you for uh, joining us, and I hope this gave you some information that you needed. And uh, we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>